to lose myself to give all I have away offering all I have to give and I will take
Amen. How many of you really need the Lord? Amen. Thank you, team. Well, welcome to Dove Christian Center Church, also known as Dove Church, Detroit. We welcome you to this video presentation. We thank God for you looking in on us. We thank God for those of you in the house. And we thank God that, that he is just moving among us. Amen? Amen. Amen. We thank God for those that regularly give into this, this ministry outreach. And, and we appreciate you and thank you for your support. And we bless you. And in turn, we ask that God will return it to you. He gives seed to sowers and bread for us to eat. Given it shall be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, shall men give into your bosom. And we believe that God will give it back to you and put it in your coat pocket. Amen? In Jesus' name. Well, before we proceed and go into our prayer for this service and for this preaching and teaching time, we're going to say our confession. Amen? Everybody with your Bible or your phone or iPad, wherever it is, uh, uh, your, your word is, let's say it. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for what's given to us freely of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your beautiful presence. We thank you and we adore you and we magnify you today and declare there is none like you. And we thank you that you are Lord above lords. And we bless you today. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, lesson two, your breakthrough moment. Lesson two, your breakthrough moment. Last week, I gave you the first three, and I'm just going to repeat them right quick. Number one, breakthroughs happen when you accept ignorance. Number two, breakthroughs happen after you realize hard work isn't working. You need to get it and listen to it so you'll understand what that's about. Number three, breakthroughs emerge when you stop trying to find them. When you stop trying to find them. Number four today. And this is a radical look at breakthroughs because we get that whole other side of breakthroughs. You got breakthrough coming and breakthrough going. You know, we hear a lot of stuff and but I've, I've come to find out that breakthrough is part of a process. So number four, breakthroughs follow failure. That's almost too practical, isn't it? Breakthroughs follow failure. Breakthroughs happen because of repeated force. They happen because of repeated force. It's that knock and keep knocking, seek and keep seeking, ask and keep asking. Repeated force. And when you need to come through, you need to continually bombard heaven. And that's what we stop doing. We need to bombard it. Failure and discouragement aid this force. When you fail enough, when you get discouraged enough, you really hunger after breakthrough. 
A drought of anything makes you hunger after it. Only those who try and fail eventually get breakthrough. See, the church don't want to talk about failures. But before many victories, there's some failure. You do get no's. You do get not now. Something does not get approved. The job didn't come through. Oh, I know I'm in the right place. And just to give a, a illustration from Bible, from the, from the word of breakthroughs, follow failure, turn to Mark 9, 17 through 25. We're going to read it, and then we're going to go back and emphasize some things. This is given to bless you, to send you to a different place and thinking. Mark 9, 17 through 25. Everything is in New King James Version. And it said there, Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and wherever it seizes him, It throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. Are we in the right place, everybody? All right. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He spoke to the people that hung out with Jesus, asking because they probably thought association meant that they could do the same thing, which they should have been able to do it. Are y'all seeing this? But but he admitted, he said, they could not. See, at some point you have to stop being a follower and, 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 and hanging out and become a duplicator. See, sometimes you can hang out with Jesus because you want Jesus to do the work, but Jesus is important to you so you can do the work. He answered him, continuing the reading, and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. I don't know who he was talking to, but he wasn't talking to the man that had the son. I got to believe he was talking to the ones that should have been able to cast it out. Woo. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him immediately, the spirit convulsed and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood, often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Not only did this boy try to throw himself into the fire, but he threw his dad in with him. That means he grabbed him and went into the fire, and then he grabbed him and jumped in the water with him. So the devil not only wanted the son, he wanted to kill the father too. Oh, that's a lesson all by itself. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, how quick? The father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deep and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. And he left. 
Well, let's, let's analyze what was read. This man dealt with this problem from the time that his child was a young boy. He probably was a teen at this time. He was not successful in getting help for him all of that time. He was unsuccessful. So he was a failure at being successful in getting help for his friend, for his son. He was a failure at it. After a while, he stopped believing his son could get help. And sometimes you can be so unsuccessful for a period that you don't understand it, but unbelief creeps in and you stop believing that you can. I know you won't readily admit that, but there's been a period where you didn't believe it would ever happen. But the pressure of failure, remember, it's a force. Pushed him to the brink of breakthrough. What was that brink? He decided to try Jesus. You'll get breakthrough when you decide, finally, to try Jesus. And nothing else. Try Jesus. Jesus tells the man, if you can believe, he immediately identified the cause of the problem. If you can believe, listen, if you can believe, let me tell you what the outcome, all things are possible to them that believe. If you can just make yourself believe, there's some possibility for breakthrough coming. My God. In other words, if you can just get your faith activated, turn to somebody and tell them, activate your faith. We can move to breakthrough. Then the father cried out after he realized what was going on. He said, Lord, I believe. He had gotten, he had, he, Jesus had made the adjustment in him. You won't get it going until you let somebody make adjustment in your thinking. You cannot self-adjust. You think you can. But he sends preachers in the land, prophets in the land, to help adjust you. It's like a chiropractic adjustment. You won't push in the right spots because you're scared of the pain. But sometimes to get the right adjustment, they got to pop something and push it back into place. See, you can talk about how good you can adjust yourself, but you cannot adjust yourself. Somebody has to adjust you and they got to go to, to the right spot to do it because you won't touch the place where it's painful. How many of you know I'm talking right? You'll keep backing off. That's why you can't exercise a long, long time. Because as soon as the pain kick in, I'm stopping this. I, 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 you know, I'll come back tomorrow and do a little bit more. But you don't do a little bit more because that same pain threshold has never been breached. And not until you breach it will you get to the next place. You're in pain. Holler, I'm in pain. And stop limping around trying to fix you. I know how to fix me, but you're still limping. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I hollering a little bit? I'm sorry. All Jesus needs to hear you say is, Lord, I believe. Help me pass my unbelief. Help me get over unbelief. I believe. Help my unbelief. He'll help you. At that instant, the father received breakthrough and the son was delivered. 
The movement of breakthrough is from failure to victory. Breakthrough delivers you to victory. You literally burst through to a different place and a different situation. You are literally standing in a different place. A different situation. Oh. And sometimes you don't have to move to stand in a different place. Let me help you with that. Because if you get breakthrough standing where you are, you immediately move without shifting your body. Do you understand me? It's like you're broke one day and you get a check. And you stand there opening the mail. While you're opening the mail, you're on one side of breakthrough. And then when you open it, you're on the other side of breakthrough. But you, your feet have never moved. But you got breakthrough right there. Come on, y'all don't even understand what I'm talking about. You're thinking of a long haul and a long trip. Sometimes it's a standstill to see the salvation. I'm preaching to myself today. Let me say this to you. The need to succeed combined with the fear of failure prevents breakthrough. You're trying to succeed so hard because you're scared of failing till you don't get breakthrough. I want to tell you, breathe and trust God. In the middle of it, breathe. Trust God. And he will make yourself, make you successful. And he will give you good success. Joshua 1 and 8. You want good success? God promises that. Questions you should ask yourself. What could I try? What am I learning? Number two. Number three. What is failure teaching me not to do again? Amen. It's okay to fail, but why you keep failing doing the same thing, hoping for a different outcome? That turns into a mental disorder. Same old thing. Maybe this time it'll be better. Well, you just got a black eye on the other side. Number five. Breakthrough happens when trying something radically different. It's on the screen, so if you need to write. Breakthrough happens, breakthroughs happen, plural, when trying something radically different. Radically is the operative word. Radical is risky. Whoa. It's risky. There might be failure. But conversely, there might be success. See, we border on the failure without accepting that this might work. Trusting God. Oh, what a concept. It might work. Why radical? Because it is out of the box. It is a shift from the comfortable. Radical is not comfortable. It is uncomfortable. To be challenged is not comfortable. It is uncomfortable. And the teachers that get on your nerve the most are the ones that, that work the hardest to shift you from being comfortable. 
into a different place. And those are the ones you want to shut down on. I remember when Lou was in grade school, he had one of the hardest teachers. She said, when, she, when, when they walked in, she said, she said it, 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 whatever her name was, I can't, Miss who? Miss Baker. Ms. Baker. So she, 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 said, she said, you'll be all right if you pass my class. See, right now you're a failure. You're working to be a success. Now you know you're in trouble. When he went off, when Lou went off to U of M, we went to a, a special conference and we were sitting there and, 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 and all the kids were lined up on a row together. They were all sitting together and they told him this thing. And I said, oh, this is, this is terrible. I just quaked. They said, look to your right. Look to your left. One of you all will not make it after the first year. <laughs> And you, one, two, three. <laughs> Who are you talking about, me? Failure proceed. Success. I always love the teachers that says, when you walk in, now this is reverse psychology. They'll say, everybody has an A today. You're in trouble when? You're really in trouble if they say everybody has an A today. Then you get the syllabus. And you read it. You say, oh, I got to see. <laughs> everybody say radical. radical. To be radical means you may have to break some habits. And push past limitations. Turn with me if you will. Luke 19, 1 through 10. We need to look at an illustration from the Bible of somebody that got radical. But they also received breakthrough. And here begins the reading. 19 and 1. Now behold, is that what it says? Now behold is verse 2. Hmm? Now behold is verse 2. Verse 2, I'm sorry. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Are we on the same page? Who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. It's important that they mention he had status, plus he was rich. Because if we're not careful, we think that the only people that need salvation are poor folk. More folk need Jesus than the ministers in, you know, you need more ministry just in the, in the ghetto. Wall Street needs it too. And he sought to see who Jesus was. But could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down. For today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, when they, who is they? The Pharisees, the religious community, the religious community. You want to get, get toe up, it's the, uh, the religious community. They all complained saying, 
he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. The religious community. See, it's okay to be a guest of the sinner, but not become a sinner when you're the guest. Then Zacchaeus, continuing to read, stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to, to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Well, let's back it up. He said, I will restore fourfold if I have taken anything. You... It ain't about if. You're a tax collector. You had taken it. At the point that this, the, the scripture began by saying he was short but he was rich. By the time we got to the ending of this discourse and his relationship with Jesus, he had been rendered poor. But he got rich again. Do you understand me? He, he said, for, for, I'm giving, you, you were literally giving all your stuff away. That's why the Bible said he was rich. He was a rich shorty. Now he's a poor shorty. Let, 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 let's. Let's debrief this or tear it apart a little bit. Zacchaeus was short and could not see Jesus because of the crowd. I'm getting feedback. He did something radical. He did something radical. He climbed a tree. Because the tree would give him the height that he needed above the crowd to see Jesus. When your sight is obscured, you need to do something radical. The twins do something interesting. One day I was playing with them. And I came up and I said, hey, what you doing? And they like loud. They loud babies. They, they like loud. And I said, hey, and I hollered and made all kind of face. And Bella was in front of Judah. And Judah, because he couldn't see me, he reached up and touched the side of his sister's head and pushed it to the side and peeped. When something is in your sight, in the way, have sense enough to change your position. <laughs> we keep sitting there saying, I can't see. I can't see. Come on, here's another one you say. I wish they would move. <laughs> Come on. So I can see. His repositioning himself brought him notice. See, in the crowd, Jesus wouldn't have picked him out. But up in the tree, he looked up, he said, well, there's a man in the tree. Oh, I know who that is. That's Zacchaeus. Because he was a tax collector. He had probably collected taxes from Jesus. He knew him. He, the Lord knew who he was and he called them by name. Yeah. When you seek Jesus, he will come to you. He said, come down. I'm coming to your house today. <laughs> what? This was a radical, norm-busting You busted a norm. You're going to the house of a sinner. 
When Jesus hangs out with you, things change. Because between one verse and the next verse, there was a lot of conversation. But the interesting thing is, on the other side of the conversation, we find Zacchaeus giving stuff away to the poor. And if I've robbed anybody, do I need to switch to another mic? Okay. Jesus got what he was after, Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus got what he needed. Jesus. And Jesus said, today, salvation has come to this house. So he became, his rich became poor, but became rich again because he got saved. Salvation has come to this house, and not only to Zacchaeus, but when the, when the Bible says it has come to this house, the whole house got saved. Because an invitation that was accepted. I'm coming to your house. How do I break out? You want to be radical? An example of radical is not waiting for annual raise time to ask for a raise on your job. Mid-year. I think I need a raise. Ask for a raise. Number two, being strongly convinced with factual info and what you believe coupled with strong conviction, not going along with the group. That's radical. Going against the current is radical. Not just to be messy. Some people just go against to go against. Radical new behaviors may not work immediately. Expect to fail. Learn, but keep trying. What did I say? Learn, but keep trying. Learn, but keep trying. Most things need tinkering with to get them to a level above everybody else. The Model T wasn't a, wasn't a success at first. There were some, some flub models before the Model T. Keep tinkering. Your favorite recipe was a uh at first. Your first cakes flopped. And sometime after you've learned to bake them, you still get a flop. Ooh. But once you tinkered at it and you got your recipe down pat, then it comes out the same every time because you got in the lane of success. But you only learned it through failing. And said, I'm going to keep trying this. So you put some more butter out. And you get some more sugar out. And you keep paying money until you're a success. I was reading about a woman who she said, I learned how to make a certain cake. And it became the basis for many cakes. And she said, when I didn't have much money in them days, I made $20,000 just baking cakes for people. You keep tinkering till you become a success. Failures don't merit the next. <laughs> you give up too early. You give up too soon. You've made no investment, but you want great return. And you won't value it until you got great investment in it. So you won't squander the return. Are you out there? That's why a million dollars won't do you any good if you don't have any discipline over money. Oh, wow. Oh. Number six, breakthrough happened around new people. Around new people. People that can challenge you. People that know more than you. 
You cannot be the smartest person in the room. You need to be around somebody that knows something that can help you. And I hope you're listening to me because you need breakthrough in your situation right now. You're working on success right now. But this is the work in success you need to be doing. New people ignite creativity if they are positive. Remember, what you entertain will detain you. You entertain junk, that's what you'll be detained by. Oh, oh, my God. How? How do I get breakthrough around new things and new people? Number one, join, join a special group to challenge you to learn something else. Keep learning. Increase your learning curve. Number two, read a book about breakthrough people. You need encouragement. Leave some of them romance novels alone. You don't need help with that. <laughs> My God. Next thing that's overlooked, study your history to discover what is in your DNA. Because you've got somebody in your ancestry line that was successful. I checked mine out and I found so many preachers till I didn't feel special anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's somebody in your background that did something phenomenal, but you don't know nothing about. You act like you just appeared. And it's all wonderful. It's in your DNA. Somebody back there knew how to do something. When I find a skill, trust me, there's somebody in my past that knew how to do it. My wife thinks like her mom. She's more educated than, than Ruth was, but they have the same thought processes. Sometimes I have to look and see which one I'm married to. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm How many of you realize that later? The older you got, you realize that. Stop telling your kid, you just like your old daddy. Say amen. There might be something back there in his DNA that can help. Amen. Everything about him wasn't no good. <laughs> oh, I st almost said something awful just then. But. <laughs> Study your history. Find out where you came from. I was listening to Elder Leroy at his mother's home going, and, and, and it hit me. Leroy is so industrious and he can do so many things. But then I found out that his parents owned, owned a store. Fed neighborhood kids on the way to school. And then his mother would make sandwiches every morning. And people would buy groceries from their store. So industry is in his vein. I listened to everything. I was listening. I said, oh, this is deep. But I bet when I checked her history, there was something in his, her, her history and his dad's history back that predated that. Because his dad was a businessman. Roofer. Are you all out there? Because nothing just happens. You didn't just appear. You aren't the only one with that gift. If you can sing, there's some singers in your family. If you can't sing, number seven, breakthroughs happen when you try again. Whew, I'm almost done. Y'all ready for me to quit, aren't you? Breakthroughs happen when you try again. Failure is only bad if it stops you.
To walk by faith and not by sight may mean that you walk nervously. Joyce Meyer said, do it afraid. <laughs> How many of you made some nervous faith moves? One of my most nervous faith moves is when I bought our second home. And it was bank financed. And they passed me a stack of papers. You talk about doing something nervously. For 30 years, sign here, initial this, initial that, sign here, next sheet. Nervous. But I did it. Because when I got to the last sheet, I took a sigh of relief. When they took the check from me, I breathed hard again. Faith is demonstrated in your action. Keep stepping. Faith is a verb. It means do something. I'm going to give you four breakthrough moments happen when. I won't keep saying that, but then I might. Breakthrough moments happen when. One, someone tells you the truth about your weakness. We don't want to be told about our weakness. Because I got it all together. You thought yourself into a tizzy. But everything is tested by life and time. And life will change your testimony. I'm a witness. How many has life changed your testimony? How many you said you wouldn't do something that life said, yeah, you will? <laughs> and you did. <laughs> Number two, someone courageously points out the elephant in your life. Don't you see that big old thing right there in your life? Deal with that elephant in your life. Then you'll get breakthrough. Number three, breakthrough happens when you Try new opportunities as they rise up. You don't make new opportunities, you try them. That's why songs like, this is my season for breakthrough. How do you know? You can't make your season. Before you know it, you're in it. That's when it's your season. When you're in it. Oh my God. Place fears in God's hand. Number four. Woo. You really won't break through. See a lot of the stuff you're talking. Is scared talk. I'm afraid talk. You need to handle your fears. Handle your fears. Let me give you three fear scriptures and pastor's going to bring this to a close. Psalm 34 and 4. This is to help you. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from some of my fears. All of my fears. Come on. That ought to make you get happy. He will deliver you from all of your fears. Psalm 56 and 3. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. And here's another one that you ignore every week. Isaiah 43 and 1. But now thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, can anybody say some more? All right. <laughs> Fear not how. Why? What's the next part? 
I have redeemed. I bought you back. And then to let you know that I didn't make an error with who I bought and what I purchased, I called you. By your name. Carolyn, Carolyn, he called you by name. Helene, Helen, called you by name. Ro, called you by name. Chris, called you by name. Then he goes on to say, just in case you're confused about who you belong to. See, because we think we're our own. See, that's why we can't serve him in fullness because we're so caught up in being our own. And the reason why you, 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 you missed the point, he said, you are mine. That's, that's Isaiah 41, 43 and 1. We read it every Sunday. He said, you are whose? You belong to him. And at the end of the day, he's going to get his just dessert. He's going to get his due. He don't care what occupies your time. At the end of the day, you are his belonging. Oh, my God, my God, my God. You are mine. Blessing to you today. Father, we thank you. And we honor you. And we praise you for breakthrough moments. We praise you for how marvelous you are and what you alone can do. Bless every hearer that they go on to become doers of the word. And not hearers only. Echoing the prayer that was prayed earlier in this service. Focus us. Focus us. On you and off of us. Focus us on you. Because at the end of the day. You are the redeemer. Of our souls. And we belong to you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. If you heard us minister today and you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, in every situation, part of breakthrough was that those persons relied on Jesus. Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, I believe. I'm coming to your house today, Zacchaeus. Whole house saved. Give him your heart. Give him your life. Repeat after me this simple prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. Come in. Be my Lord be my Savior. Today I believe in miracles. I believe you were born of a virgin. I believe that you suffered on a cross one day and died. And three days later you were raised from the dead. And on that confession I am saved. So thank you Jesus for saving me. Amen. Find a good church to come to. Dove Church is one of those churches. 4660 Military and a ratio in the city of Detroit near border streets of Livonia, uh, Livernois rather, and Michigan Avenue. Come and be a part. We'd love to have you. There is a place for you. We have in-person service. We live stream. We just trust God for all things. Write us, let us know based on the information that you're going to receive at the end of this, this video presentation. And again, we love you. and We praise God for you. Be blessed today. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you. 
and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at dovechurch.org slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.